Hey everybody, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric, thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, hey there, it's very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, welcome back guys. Welcome to your July monthly readings. Hey, July, all right, we're in the middle of the summer guys, it's great. I hope you're enjoying yourselves. Happy birthday to all the Cancers out there. Um, I, this is, today is what? Today is the 8th of July. So we are still in Cancer season. So I hope you guys are all enjoying your birthdays, uh, your birthday season. And to all the Leos out there, your birthdays are coming up. So I'll say happy birthday to you guys now, but we'll get to that next month, yeah? Um, so I did something a little bit differently this time. I wanted to get into the energies first before I started reading for them. I'm not so keen personally on forecasting, on fortune telling. I tell people all the time I am not a fortune teller, okay? I'm more about um, understanding the current energies and bringing clarity to them to help you you know, make the best decision for yourself moving forward. So that's why I waited a little bit before um, I release I put out the, the July monthlies. Also, if you're seeing some smoke, don't worry about it. <laughs> My apartment's not on fire. <laughs> I'm just burning some sage, yeah? Um, let's see, anything else? These are general readings, okay? So take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. Um, if you would like a personal reading, I am very much available for that. You can go ahead and email me. All of the information is in the description box below. Um, num, 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 num. I think that's it. So what I'm doing with this, the readings this month, I am using the Golden Universal Tarot for the, you know, the general message. And then I'm also getting Oracle Guidance from the Unicorns and the Crystal Mandala deck. And uh, when it comes to the Crystal Mandala deck, I am um, focusing it on, yes, bringing the message forward, but also putting forth the intention that the, whatever crystal comes out, if you feel uh, guided to purchase that crystal so that you can work with it, I highly recommend that you do so. Yes, 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 that's always a fun thing to do. And yeah, I believe that is it for now. So let's get into the reading, yeah? Yay! Hey Virgo, welcome to your reading for the month of July. Let's get into it, yeah? All right. <laughs> okay. Virgo. Hey Spirit, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Please make me a clear channel for all Virgos, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages for Virgo to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of July. Thank you so much, Spirit. So, as I started connecting with the Virgo energy, I did see green. Now, Virgo is a earth sign, so that's very much why. Um, as normal, as usual, you could be very focused on your material world, um, your finances, and all that good stuff. But also, now that I'm going deeper into the Virgo energy, for those that I'm connecting with right now, I'm seeing purple which is divine wisdom and intellect coming through. And I also saw blue. Um, blue is the color of the throat chakra. Purple is the color of the crown chakra. Green is the color of the heart chakra. So when it comes to the color blue, there is a need for communication right now. There is a need for truth and authenticity. Um, speaking your truth. Speaking your truth to others around you that may not necessarily want to hear it, to be quite honest. But as a Virgo, I mean, I'm a Virgo rising, so I know what it's like to be very opinionated about something. <laughs> but you, And we're not, as Virgos, it's not like we're really that afraid of giving our two cents. Sometimes, sometimes we do it when it's not really necessary or not even wanted, but you know what? There are other times where it's just like... I'm going to talk. You're going to listen. You don't like it. Not my problem. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, Virgo. One more shuffle for you, Virgo. And then I'll cut the deck and we'll get into this. Yeah, Virgo. Virgo, Virgo, Virgo. Virgo, Virgo, Virgo. Here we go. 
Boop. Okay. Overall energy, Virgo. We're starting you off with the Ten of Swords. Yep. Completion. Done. All right. Now, the Ten of Swords is up right here. This is good. Okay. This is the release of it. You've, you've come to the end of the situation, whatever this represents for you. And this is actually, this has to do with that truth you need to speak. You're done being backstabbed. You're done being taken advantage of. You're done being a doormat. That's about it. You're not taking it anymore. I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. What's that from? You, you guys know what that is. We've got the Ten of Swords. We've got the wheel in reverse. Now, this is another ten, but the wheel is in reverse here. So maybe the situation isn't quite complete yet, okay? Ugh, we've got the Two of Swords, but also the Two of Swords is in reverse. Okay. And we've got the Six of Swords. Okay, good. So this is why the wheel is in reverse right now, because you're in the process of moving forward. But I want you guys to look. I want you guys to take a look at this. You've got the Ten of Swords here, and then you've got the wheel, which is another ten. Okay? Completion is at hand. Okay? With the Six of Swords, you are moving forward for, into calmer waters. With the Two of Swords, you're no longer in reverse. You're no longer in a stalemate. Um, you're no longer blindfolded. You're no longer indecisive. Virgos can be pretty indecisive. I know that for a fact. I get into some situations, some moments where I just cannot make a decision. You know? But hey, I just heard indecisiveness is gone, okay? The wheel here is talking about karmic cycles coming to an end, okay? Um... It might be a little bit of a tricky process. It might be. It might be a quite, quite a challenging process actually stopping this wheel from turning in this way. But ultimately, you do have the Ten of Swords behind you and you have the Two of Swords in reverse. So you come to an understanding that whatever the, this is represented by the wheel of fortune, it needs to stop. It just needs to stop. 444 on the counter, okay? So you have an awareness of this needing to stop. And it's needed to stop for some time. That's also what the wheel in reverse is saying. This wheel has been spinning in this way for some time now. But you finally come to the end. You finally come out of an indecisive uh, stalemate type energy. And now you're ready to really put this to rest. Getting into your storyline, we have the Ace of Wands. But the Ace of Wands is in reverse. Um, and that's just saying that you don't know quite how to proceed. You don't know quite how to move forward. But like I said, you have the inspiration here. You have the understanding that the wheel needs to stop turning in this way. You just are not quite sure how to stop it yet. Ace of Wands in reverse and the Hanged Man. The Hanged Man is in reverse though. So I feel like Virgo, you or maybe someone else around you. Now this could be someone else around you that we're talking about here. But whoever we're talking about here, here right now has kind of been in a, a, a hanged man state for a little bit of time, okay? But when this card comes out in reverse, especially in this deck, I see someone that has started to or has reached enlightenment, has seen things differently here with this halo around this guy's head, and now they're starting to come out of it, okay? So that's what um, the Ten of Swords is really saying to me in conjunction with this stuff. There has been a bit of a self-imposed isolation, almost like a mini hermit moment, right? Um, and the hermit is your card, so we'll see if that comes out here. But um, enlightenment or illumination around some cert some situation has been gained or is is coming into focus, okay? And so that's that's giving some sort of inspiration here. But it's just, it's not quite time to move forward yet. That's all. But you're getting there. You're starting to see things clearer. You're starting to see things differently. And that's really, really good. Moving forward, we have the King of Pentacles. So here you are, Virgo, and you're upright. You're sitting on your throne. Okay? This is good. King of Pentacles with... Ooh, the Queen of Wands. But you may, but the Queen of Wands is in reverse. You may be at odds with someone that repre that's represented by the Queen of Wands. This could be a fire sign, uh, Leo, Sagittarius, or Aries. Um, but you know what? Don't like look at these cards. And what I'm picking up, and look at look at how where these people are facing. The Queen of Wands is reversed, but she's 
to me, she's looking directly at this King of Pentacles. And the King of Pentacles is kind of looking off to the side. And his, his expression seems kind of somber, maybe even sad. Regretful, even, is what I'm picking up here. But the Queen of Wands, and, and the Queen of Wands is reversed because this King of Pentacles may feel like the Queen of Wands is at odds with him, but that really isn't the case. She really isn't. Because look, she's staring right at him. And wait, let me see. Yeah, and I guess what I'm seeing in, this, in these cards is that the Queen of Wands expression is way more compassionate and loving and very understanding. Okay, I do. I am picking up. I'm picking up some regret, some regret, and some remorse from this King of Pentacles here. All right, let's move forward. We've got the Page of Cups. Okay, a love offer of some sort. And if you look here, <laughs> if you look how these how this looks right now, it looks like this Page of Cups wants to offer, wants to send a message or offer something to the Queen of Wands. It looks more like that down here, but. That's, that's just, that's what I saw. That's what my intuition said. So anyway, um, the, the page of cups with the page of pentacles. All right. So there is an offer that wants to be made here. There is a brand new start that's wanted. And with these two pages coming out together, somebody wants to offer love and commitment. And the depiction in this deck of the Page of Pentacles is so incredibly crazy to me because the Page of Cups looks like a young kid, which is normally what the pages rep resemble or represent. But the Page of Pentacles here, he looks way more mature. Like, he looks like he's been through some shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? But somebody wants to make an offer. Somebody wants to start over, okay? And this is not just emotion. This is not just material. This is a combination of both. Yeah? Okay. Moving forward, we've got the Nine of Swords. All right, so there's some anxiety, either for you, Virgo, or for whoever. But this, uh, whoever else we're talking about, but this anxiety is coming from the person that wants to make this offer. They don't know how to do it yet. They're stressing themselves out about it. They're probably being a little too hard on themselves about it, to be quite honest. And if that's you, Virgo, I mean, us being the perfectionists that we are, do I need to say more? <laughs> Nine of Swords is coupled with the Six of Pentacles. So what I'm picking up here is there is anxiety around the past, mostly, when it comes to a balance between give and take. Somebody was in, the, well, the relation, if we're talking a relationship between two people here, there was a heavy imbalance. Someone was giving more and someone was giving less. Someone was giving everything, someone was giving nothing, like that kind of thing. And there's anxiety surrounding this situation because somebody wants to start stepping up and, and giving more. Somebody wants to balance the scales when it comes to give and receive, but they're anxious about it because they don't necessarily know how to do it. It might be very new to them, okay? Yeah. Don't be so hard on yourself, guys. Honestly. Perfection. 11-11 on the counter! Woo! Um, perfectionism is a fool's game, to be quite honest. Because perfection is subjective. What's perfect to someone else, what's perfect to you is not going to be what's perfect to someone else. You know what I mean? Like, that kind of thing. All right, moving forward. Ooh, we've got the Five of Pentacles. It's in reverse. Let's see. With mm, the Knight of Cups in reverse. Okay. All right. Someone is stuck in lack mentality. Someone doesn't feel like they're good enough. Someone doesn't feel like they're deserving. And this is the person that wants to give this message of love. We had the Page of Pentacles and the Page of Cups, and now we have the Knight of Cups. Okay? The, the pages, the two pages over here are resembling the fact that somebody wants to start over. But with, when it actually comes to delivering this message, someone feels like they're not worthy enough. 
Either you feel, Virgo, like you're not worthy enough of receiving this message, or you, Virgo, or someone that wants to come towards you, Virgo, doesn't feel like they are worthy enough of receiving you, of being able to step up to you and say, hey, can we start over? That's an illusion. Because you are worthy enough. You may not feel worthy enough because of this imbalance between give and take. You may be losing sleep or having extreme anxiety, daymares, nightmares over this because there was this imbalance between give and take. And that could be the reason why you don't feel like you deserve to even approach this person. That is not the case here, okay? Because I want you guys to remember, even though the King of Pentacles thinks that the Queen of Wands hates him, the Queen of Wands is still staring directly at him, loving him from afar. Now, please understand, I'm talk these are gender right here, but I'm just talking energy, okay? This is interchangeable. It doesn't matter your physical gender. I'm talking about the energies here, okay? Gosh, look at this. And just look at this guy. Look at this guy on the King of Pentacles. Look at how somber he looks. I know he's holding a, a scepter there, but it looks like he's holding his heart. Like, God, what did I do? I almost want to cry here. Like, this is intense energy, guys. But the Queen of Wands does not see things the way the King of Pentacles does. The Queen of Wands sees things very, very differently. Very compassionately, okay? All right, okay. Moving forward, we've got the moon... You see, I was just, and this is falling underneath the King of Pentacles and the Queen of Wands. I was just saying, whoever is represented by the King of Pentacles here, it is not what it seems. Because the moon is about secrets, illusion, not seeing things for as, it, as they truly are. Yeah? The moon is coupled with oof, the Knight of Wands in reverse. Uh-oh. All right, I'm picking up a few things here. The first thing I picked up was that somebody is out there running around trying to maybe prove to themselves. How do I want to say this? Prove to themselves that they don't need this person is what I just heard. But it's happening in vain. It's it, because... Ultimately, who, whoever is represented by the Knight of Wands here, who's in and out constantly, who's who I'm hearing drowning their sorrows also with this combination. But ultimately, they're just going to keep circling back to this one person that they truly want to be with or they truly desire if we're talking a relationship. This is very much a relationship reading right now. Um... The other thing I'm getting here is that there may be a misunderstanding that someone is acting like the Knight of Wands and like just, you know, <laughs> racking up notches on the bedpost or on their belt when that's not the case. It's a lie. Hmm. The Moon and the Knight of Wands in reverse. I'm also getting one more thing here. Uh, whoever is represented by the Knight of Wands in reverse is caught in illusion and so they can't move forward. Yes. All stuck up in their illusion, stuck up in their head with the Nine, the nine of Swords. Wants to take action, wants to move forward in a passionate way so with something that they're very, very passionate about. But they can't because they're caught in a bunch of illusion with the moon. Mm. All right, let's move forward. We've got the four of cups in reverse. Okay. All right. With the five of swords. Oh. All right, give me a second here. Okay. 
Okay. Um, so there's conflict here. It's mental conflict. This is probably this person that's stuck up in their head with the Nine of Swords. I'm, I keep hearing unrequited love here with the Four of Cups in reverse. Unrequited, like unrequited excuse me. Uh, taking something for granted. Someone is refusing to let go of the past in what happened when the camp comes to like neglect or taking someone for granted. And it's causing a lot of conflict here with the five of swords. And this is mental conflict. It's self-sabotaging conflict. Someone is stuck in the past of this four of cups energy. They're spending so much time focusing on what happened when it comes to the three of cups that they're missing the ace of cups that's still behind them. Yeah. And I really feel like most like I, I for the most part, I feel like this is you Virgo because, um, we can be very, very hard on ourselves. We can be very, very self sabotaging when it comes to our thoughts about ourselves and what we, and our actions, right? This is self-sabotaging behavior for whoever this is. Because, because yeah, that's, because the rest of the cards are leading towards that. We've got the Nine of Swords. We've got the Moon, you know? Okay. Finally, we have the lovers with the two of wands in reverse. All right. So the lovers is about decisions, needing to make a decision, and so is the two of wands. Uh, the lovers could mean a soulmate, a divine partner, maybe a twin flame. It really could be a twin flame because we've, we've got, you know, we've got these two wands here. Excuse me. But someone is trying to figure out how to move forward in, in, in something that's in a direction that's more authentic to them as, uh, with the, with the, the, the lovers here too. This is about making a decision, um, that serves your highest good with the lovers. Cause you can either choose vice or you could choose virtue. And I really feel like someone is really done with choosing vice over virtue. Someone wants to choose virtue now, but they don't know how to do it. They don't know how to go about pursuing it either because of all this conflict with the five of swords. Okay. But really, this is a, whatever is symbolized by the lovers and the two of wands here, this is a really good decision to make. I mean, the fact that this person has gotten to the place where they actually can say to themselves, I want to choose virtue over vice, that is a huge step. I feel like for a lot of the people that I'm connecting with here who is resonating with this part of the situation, and if I'm talking to you, that's like a quantum leap. Right? All righty. So let's get into the unicorn guidance here. Let me just put this there. Boop. Okay. Guidance from the unicorns for Virgo for the month of July. All right, Virgo. Let's see what the unicorn, the unicorns have for you this month. Oops. <laughs> Or Virgo for the month of July. Virgo, Virgo, Virgo. There we go. Let's we'll see if there's anything. Woohoo! Okay, no, those are the real messages. <laughs> you got two, Virgo. All right. So, first card makes perfect, perfect sense. Abundance, okay? Enjoy the bounty of life. Your supply is unlimited. 
blessings are coming to you. Okay? You don't have to worry about lack. Okay? You don't have to worry about lack. Because we have, you know, you, you feel, you feel, some of you, either this is you, Virgo, or something connect, someone connected to you. Someone that really wants to be connected to you. Okay? And they feel like they messed up huge, like big time, like epic fail. Not the case with abundance here. I'm hearing this love will stand the test of time, especially with the lovers here. Okay. All right, cool. Moving forward, we have polarity. Integrate your shadow side. There can be no light without dark. Understand the law of polarity. And this is speaking directly to those Virgos who are trapped in their head, in their ego consciousness about some of the wrongs they may have done or the wrongs that someone else may have done to them. This is the universe speaking directly to your perfectionism. Nobody is perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. But that does not mean you cannot heal from them. That does not mean you cannot try again. And the, wow, the one thing I really, really want to say, and the one thing that the universe really wants to get through right now is that your past does not have to define you. Your past does not define you. Your past is full of lessons that it seems whoever I'm connecting with here has either learned from or is starting to learn from. Good on you. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. All right, so Crystal Mandala deck. I can't, okay? So like if whatever comes out here, if, whatever crystal comes out, if you feel called to uh, to purchase one, to work with it, I encourage you to do so for Virgo for the month of July. Virgo, 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 Virgo. Wait a month. Woo! Okay. Wow. There's two. Four. There's three. Okay. <laughs> Alright, cool. There's three, Virgo. So we've got... The first one is card number 34, Ascended Master Merlin, Merlin and Mystic Merlinite. Read the energy. And Virgos, I feel like we're pretty intuitive anyway, so we have a pretty good, easy time of doing that, right? Right. The next is card number 49, Goddess Maya and Ruby Aura Quartz. Searing Presence. And finally, we've got card number 39, Goddess Sekhmet and Fire Agate, Passion of the Lion Heart. All right. So I'm going to get into the book for these. First one, card number 34. Here we go. Read the energy. We bring you the blessing of reading the energy. We, have, we affirm that you have the ability to read energy accurately, and we encourage you to apply your gifts. You don't have to be in control of the inflow of divine information. When a message or insight comes to you naturally, this is best. Simply being open and receptive as you intend to read the energy of the person, place, or situation at hand is enough. Whether you have been reading energetically for years or are just beginning your journey of interpreting energetic information, we are here to assist you in becoming confident and trusting in your perceptive abilities. Yeah. So some of you may be really opening up to your intuitions lately. And that's great. And I can tell you right now, your intuition has been saying to you, don't be so hard on yourself. <laughs> Especially with the moon here. Uh, and the moon can talk about intuition too. But with the moon here, your intuition is also saying, it's not what it seems, right? OK, 
Okay. Next, we have, oh wait. Oh, I, I want to read this. This oracle comes to you with a message that your perceptive abilities are a key part of your life purpose and divine life's work. Developing, relying upon, or honoring what you sense energetically is helpful for your life journey as it assists you in making good choices and is helpful for others who can benefit from your ability to see what they may not as yet be able to consciously recognize. When you share your perception from a place of unconditional love, non-judgment, and genuine compassion, your reflections can help others gain awareness and insight, which they can then use to empower themselves, overcome fear, and move more wholly into love. This is a benefit to all. Yeah? Cool. Next, we have card number 49, Goddess Maya and Ruby Aura Quartz, Searing Presence. Here we go. Searing Presence. We bring you the empowerment of Searing Presence. This empowerment enables you to see truth, unveiled, naked divinity in all its beauty and mastery. In your willingness to become present, you shall witness the truth that will set your spirit free and make your heart come alive with divine love. No lie, deception, fear, or agenda remains hidden in searing presence, the ruthless compassion of which distills pure truth. With this empowering, you are going to see what you need to see. You're going to be able to see the truth that there is only ever love seeking to free, heal, and discover itself. You will feel the grace that permeates your life and assists all beings. All impatience, doubt, uncertainty, and confusion shall give way, becoming soft like wax melted by a lit candle, and only the beautiful light of truth shall remain. Now remember, I said when I was in the beginning, I was channeling the energies and I saw blue, and it meant some speaking truth, standing in your authenticity, right? And then with the purple that was coming through, that is absolutely your crown chakra activating and you being able to now connect with your psychic abilities. And that's what we, the energy was saying. All right. So finally, we have card number 39, Passion of the Lion Heart. And I kind of really connect with this card because I'm a Leo moon, so... I know what passion feels like. <laughs> okay. Passion of the Lion Heart. We bring you the empowerment of Passion of the Lion Heart. Through passion, you will dedicate yourself with an intensity and discipline that may surprise you. Passion is love activated. It is energy that, move, that moves you from within and empowers you to act in the, in the world in ways you would not otherwise dare to even consider. Passion gives you strength plugs you into the eternal energy of sacred fire and generates the ability to accomplish tasks you once may not have believed possible. With great passion, there can be great pain. The heart that loves wild and open is also the heart that can feel disappointment and doubt more, most keenly. The empowerment of the lion heart strengthens your heart to recover from any pain through the power of courage, commitment, and bold, loving devotion to what matters most to you. Wow, that's a pretty, those, those, I mean, those Oracle cards are pretty spot on. All right, Virgo, so there it is. I hope that resonated with you and I hope it was helpful. Much, much love to you guys. And I look forward to connecting with you again for the month of August. Yeah, take care. Mwah. Bye.